These wetlands are an incredible asset for our community because they are not just a sewage treatment plant, but they are an absolute best practice example of ecological engineering. Understanding how wetlands work and how they can play a pivotal role for our sewage treatment. We're only just scratching the surface to understand exactly the great powers and benefits that wetlands can serve for us as far as filtering our water, taking out some of the chemicals that our lifestyles have started to embed within our water system. Our sewage treatment plant is taking the waste from our communities and filtering it into beautiful water that the environment can enjoy. But more importantly, it gives us an opportunity to find out how important these wetlands are. Science and understanding about how we can live alongside our wetlands is an exploding, moving industry. And it's exciting to be part of that because we can be trialling, looking at best practice measurement tools available to find out all the great benefits. The more we develop a really robust and sustainable wetland system, the more we can be part of the solution. These wetlands are beautiful natural spaces for birds to come and enjoy. They also have the capacity to increase the environmental and social benefits, whether it be locals coming and enjoying the bird life and start to have a community that can live alongside recreated wetlands, which our indigenous mobs have done for thousands of years. From the very first ponds of the wetland, to what comes here is an incredibly polished water. The bits that we don't want are out and the water itself that flows into these wetlands then finally into the ocean is a quality that can do us proud. This is replicating and reinstating wetlands that have existed here for thousands of years, giving all the great coverage and support for our bird life that comes from far and wide and this is only just the beginning. Council has a commitment to expand these reconstructed wetlands from currently 40 hectares to over 120 hectares. We have an opportunity here to start redeveloping wetlands across the Byron catchment and Bolongil catchment, hopefully hooking up to private wetlands that have been established and even the stormwater wetland work that we're going to be doing through Byron Bay. Finally, we're starting to see this whole area as one big catchment that we can bring back to life restore to some decent health and to start to integrate our wetland work to start to see this entire area around Byron Bay as one wonderful opportunity to re-establish wetlands, to live alongside wetlands, bring back some of our fantastic environmental spaces, bring back our birds and seize an opportunity to understand where we live is important and how we look after our places is just as important. because these wetlands, not only are they environmentally important and also, of course, for our biodiversity, but they operate as a carbon sink. They draw out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it here. What better way than to re-establish wetlands and allow nature to do the work for us? They can play a fantastic role to mitigate against the, the emissions that are exploding, as we know so tragically, both here and around the world. We all know as a community that we need to start to become far more resilient and adaptive to the effects of climate change and recreated wetlands play a really effective role in doing so. Firstly it helps mitigate the impacts of floods. Climate change weather events here we know are going to be increased storms and increased intensity of storms. So surges from the ocean, increased flooding are what really are going to affect this area far more than others. Wetlands can help play a role in creating that resilience for us as a community. It mitigates the floods, it also mitigates some of the storm surges because it absorbs so much of the excess water. It plays a role for any drought because it's storing water and slowly releases it across the land. When you have wetlands such as this, it can provide a great buffer between town and where we live with potential fire risks. When it comes to climate change, resilience is going to be key. 
this sort of deliberate planning, ecologically sustainable development is part of council's future decision making also. We need to ensure that our strategies, our plans, keep looking forward to make sure how we reuse our sewage treated water, how we use our storm water, and how we direct our storm water is part of a bigger strategic plan for this area. We're reusing more of our treated water than ever before. We're looking to enhance this space to over 120 hectares of reconstructed wetlands. And we're looking to work out how can we best utilise all the land around here, both councils and private, to ensure all the great benefits from creating wetlands can be realised for not just council, but for our wider community. I do recall in the 1990s there was an ocean outfall proposed for Byron and that proposal is responsible for this wetland here because at that time the citizens of Byron Bay very strongly objected. They sat in front of bulldozers, they sacked the council, they said we're not going to surf in sewage. And over the years the sewage treatment plants went into overload mode, it resulted in a moratorium on development and it really was a relationship between council and the community that came up with instead of an ocean outfall we're going to regenerate wetland systems and reuse that effluent onto those wetland systems and hey while we're at it we're going to manage the acid sulfate soils by managing those water tables and we're also going to look at the ecological connectivity of the system and if we can put a melaleuca wetland here when you've got one on that side and one on that side, you're going to increase ecological integrity and we can also sequester carbon. Constructed wetlands are really good at removing a wide range of pollutants from wastewater. The wetlands have exceeded their treatment capability. The fact that the trees have grown so well under this environment indicates to me that all of those outcomes are being satisfied by this wetland. Turning effluent into something that regenerates wetlands and that attracts people from an aesthetic point of view really is great sustainable effluent management. There have been well over 200 species of birds that have been identified in this wetland system and if you compare that to the typical approach of concrete and chemicals and almost sterilising nature, this really is a very good alternative. It's also added to ecotourism. The Byron Bay Integrated Water Management Reserve is on the beaten path of bird watchers. If a large pulse of water comes through the system, then it'll slow it down. So you might have this peak of water that comes down. Wetlands will just slow that peak out. Underlaying this peat here, about a metre or so down, is a very dense layer of pyrite or potential acid sulphate soil. When this land was drained, that allowed the water to flow out a lot quicker than what it normally would. And that resulted in the water table dropping below the acid sulphate soil level and that resulted in liberation of acid and metals, loss of oxygen in the water and that created a lot of fish kills and I understand that there have been no major fish kills in this part of the catchment since that time so for me that's a fairly strong indicator that the acid sulphate soil side of things is working. Now with the higher water table in this area there have been no peat fires and I think that's a really important outcome. Peat contains about 50% carbon and when you burn that peat you're liberating a massive amount of carbon into the atmosphere. So by adding trees which take carbon dioxide out of the air and preventing peat fires, Byron Bay has significantly reduced its carbon footprint. My idea and I'm an idealist, is that all of the low-lying areas that once did have melaleuca in it would be regenerated with melaleuca and 
they would then be able to handle a higher hydraulic load in the catchment. Also noting Melaleuca are really high rate transpirers. They can really pump the water out of the ground. So obviously if a lot of the land that used to have Melaleuca is now it's reinstated, that is going to help reduce the hydrological load. The ability of these wetlands to remove pollutants has been outstanding. In fact, it's world class. It's won numerous awards from state and national governments. We weigh under our EPA license limits. The wetlands are extremely low cost. We release the water into the Belongeal Creek to an extremely high standard. Council's decision to raise groundwater was intentional as a way to mitigate acid sulphate runoff and peat fires. The fact that we've had no fish kills or peat fires since the scheme commenced shows the overall benefit. The water released from our 24 hectares and wetlands is of a higher pH than some of the waters being released within other parts of the Belongeal catchment, which is showing that the work we're doing by raising the water level and maintaining that water levels is keeping those pH levels up. It's acting as a buffer against those acid sulphate runoffs. The Byron Bay Bird Buddies have been reporting on this site for many, many years on the bird species. Fantastic place for birds because of its diverse habitats. We've actually recorded over 250 species of birds. We're operating an ecological environment that will balance human needs, environmental needs and social needs. The rehabilitation of the Belongeal catchment through wetland regeneration is a major focus of Council in the next 10 years and we'll be taking big steps to increase the area of wetlands. This is the best way to polish off effluent, to settle, get cleaned up by all the microbes before it makes its way through the rest of the catchment. We have a lot of people who take a lot of chemicals, <laughs> and these actually all end up in the sewage. Some configurations of wetlands help foster the microbes that can actually digest pharmaceuticals and endocrine disruptors. The longer that we can leave water in wetlands and get the effluent to have the lowest possible phosphorus and nitrogen, the better that will be because those things support algal blooms. It's this incredible oasis for a lot of the macroinvertebrates, for the water bugs, which a lot of birds and other life depend. This is one of the few ponds in Byron that these can live in. The coastal strip is a really intense acid sulfate soil. It used to be all wetlands, and that wet area is what made the abundant fisheries that we had here. We had an incredible abundance of aquatic life. Acid sulfate soils here were a hot spot. They were why we had fish kills year after year after year, in fact even multiple fish kills per year, and now with more waters in the system we're actually finding that those are rare events. In diversifying we would have more opportunities for a kind of aqua terra type culture rather than just the old idea that cows and sugarcane are all you can actually make happen here. We've seen drains constructed, 
urban area has built that have changed the hydrology of the floodplain. And we've seen an increase in stormwater runoff and nutrients that lead to a decline in water quality. And in response to that, we're seeing initiatives like here at Byron. We're seeing landholders taking it upon themselves to rehabilitate large parts of the floodplain and rehabilitation of streams, more effective management of farm drains, revegetation, weed control, fencing for protection of wildlife and creation of habitat. So there's some great things happening. We've seen a definite reduction in the fish kills. We have agreed processes for opening the estuary to manage flooding in the town while avoiding acid from the drains moving down into the estuary and creating the risk of a fish kill. We're starting to see more effective stormwater management. We want to reinstate floodplain processes. That doesn't mean that's at the expense of all other land uses and it doesn't have to be overly expensive. It's about slowing water down and spreading it out and moving it through vegetation and soils. And if we can do that tailored to the land use grazing or farming or urban land uses, we can still achieve great water quality outcomes and a number of environmental outcomes while accommodating other land uses and keeping costs down. <laughs>